Hello, welcome to this second video introducing double integrals or multivariable integrals. And we're going to look at how the process actually works. In the last video, we looked at approximating. And we said that we're going to add up the number of um, rectangular prisms, volumes, and make that approximation to your volume. But we want exactness. And so we're going to get exactness by increasing the number of subdivisions. And so as the number of subdivisions, m is the number of subdivisions in y and n is the number of subdivisions in x, as we increase that, the accuracy will increase. This is the visual of it. If you do 4 and 4, you'll see certain kind of an accuracy, but as you increase and double that and double that again, you're going to get a finer and finer um, approximation. And so, like we talked about with single variable calculus, we're going to let the limit be what we find as n goes to infinity and m goes to infinity. We're going to have to find out, you know, as n goes to infinity. All right, so we're going to let n and m go to infinity. All right, and that will give us the exact answer. It won't be, it won't be off. There won't be an approximation anymore. This is called a Riemann sum, but wait, it's a double Riemann sum. Both n and m are headed to infinity. So double Riemann sum leads to, there it is, your first look at a double integral. Uh, generically, we'll put an r underneath to represent the region. And then we have the function that we're finding the surface, the surface that we're finding the uh, volume under. Uh, dA corresponds to uh, the, the patch of area for a rectangle. You know, it's either going to be um, dy dx or dx dy. What we're going to find for a rectangle is that it uh, doesn't matter the order in which you do it in. It's called Fubini's theorem, and it says that if you're using a rectangular region trying to find the volume, it's going to be fine whether you do it as dy dx or dx dy. So what we have here then is our double integrals, but now we have bounds on them. And so the interior bounds correspond to the first variable that you're going to integrate with respect to, and the exterior bounds correspond to the second variable. So dx dy would be a and b inside and c and d outside. dy dx would be c and d inside and a and b outside. And it turns out they're exactly the same. But coming in the next set of videos, we have to figure out, well, what if the region is not rectangular? What if you just have a general blob region? And that's where things get really difficult. But for now, when you see a rectangular region, region you, should, you should get excited because that's going to be a simple calculation. It's called an iterated integral. Okay, So there's this work, you're working your way inside out. You're going to start with the inside, and you're going to work your way then to an outside integral. You're going to be integrating with respect to x first. Okay, that's fine. What do you do? Well, what did you do when you take the derivative with respect to x? You held the other variable constant. So now when you're integrating with respect to x, you're going to hold the other variable constant, treating y as a constant. Then when you're done with that, you're going to have a formula that's in terms of y, and that'll be for your outside integration. All the x's should be gone at that point. You can do it the other way around, too. You can integrate with respect to y first, holding x constant. And then when you're done with that, you'll have some formula on x, and then for that you would integrate with respect to x and end up with a number. Here's the visual of how you're sweeping out the volume. Just like you used to sweep out the area, now you're sweeping out the volume. So when you, when you integrate with respect to x first, you're slicing parallel to the x-axis, and then this is now moving in y. The direction in which it moves in is the last variable that you're going to be integrating with respect to. So you slice parallel to x and you move in the direction of y, that is what dx dy looks like. You can slice parallel to y and then move in the direction of x. That is what dy dx looks like as you visually sweep out the volume. Okay. So now we know how to find the double integral value when it's over a rectangular region exactly. Let's go back to the original example that we had where we did the approximation. We got like eight and a half. And we're going to see how bad an approximation that was. And so we're going to um, do this double integral. Whether we do a dy dx or dx dy is inconsequential. I have it set up here as dx dy. 
So you put the function, the surface, you put that inside, the order, and then the bounds have to correspond to those variables. The, in, the x variable is from 0 to 1, and the y variable is from 0 to 2. Antiderivative with respect to x, because it's the inside. Holding y constant, treating the y like you treat the 8. Uh, the antiderivative of 8 with respect to x, 8x. Antiderivative of negative 2x squared with respect to x, negative 2x cubed over 3. Here's a y. Negative y squared, the antiderivative of that with respect to x is going to be that, negative y squared, times an x. It's a definite number. We have to plug in these bounds. They're numerical. They won't be numerical in the next section, but it's okay. They're numerical, and so we get something like uh, 8 minus 2 thirds. But then here's this function on y minus y squared. That's the formula in y. That's from your slice that you did parallel to the x-axis, and now we're going to integrate with respect to y. You can go ahead and put the 8 and 2 thirds together, of course. Uh, putting 0 in gives you 0, you know, but be aware that you know the lower limit could give you something too. So 8 minus 2 thirds is uh, 24, 22 thirds. Okay, so then, um, yeah, simple single variable calculus at that point, 22 over 3y, y cubed over 3, put a 2 in, put a 0 in, and you end up with 44 over 3 minus 8 over 3. The exact answer is um, the uh, 12. It is 36 over 3. Our approximation was 8 and a half. The exact answer was 12. Okay, so that's your first double integral that you perform. It's over a rectangular region, which makes things easier. Uh, let's see if we can fit another one in. So there's some surface. 1 over x plus 4y quantity cubed, and we're looking at x is between 2 and 3, and y is between 0. Maybe I should have done this as dy dx. That's okay. Um, I should have done the other one as dy dx, so this one can be dx dy. So treat the y like you treat the 4. It's like integrating, you know, x plus 4. Just kind of ignore it for a second. I know it's not, you know, it's there. Don't totally ignore it. But when you're thinking about the antiderivative, think about it not being there. So treat it like the 4. Treat the 4y like it's some other constant. And so... Um, it being 1 over, you can bring it up with a negative exponent. And, you know, the x plus 4 doesn't really affect, you, know, you don't have to worry about u sub there. x plus 4, you know, or x plus any number, when it's raised to that power, you just do the antiderivative by raising to that power plus 1 divided by that same thing because there's no multiplier on x. So um, raised to the negative 2 divide by negative 2. All right. Now, you could um, put the 3 in and put the 2 in. So 3 plus 4y to the negative 2, 2 plus 4y to the negative 2, upper limit minus lower limit. And if there's a constant, my advice is to pull the constant out. In fact, you can pull it all the way out. And now we have a y integral. Antiderivative now. This time, the variable that we're integrating with respect to has a multiplier on it. We have to take that into account. We don't have to do a use of. But just remember that because there's a multiplier of 4, we have to undo that by dividing by 4 or times it by a fourth. It's this guy to the negative 1 over negative 1, but times by a fourth. It looks a little messy there. Maybe it's helpful to put those guys back on the bottom. And now let's go ahead and put the 1 in and a 0 in. So 3 plus 4, that's a 7. And 2 plus 4, that's a 6. But then a 0 doesn't give you 0 this time. The 0 gives you a 3 and a 2 underneath there. If you want to pull the one fourth out, that would be a good idea too. Constants, get them out of there. It makes your job a lot easier. You don't have a calculator, so you're trying to do this mentally, this calculation. So we end up with a negative one seventh and positive one sixth. And then zero gives us negative one third and positive one half. Crazy fraction arithmetic, but you can do it. Common denominator between seven and essentially six, because three and two go into six, is a 42. So everyone goes over 42. Um, distribute the negative across so you can make sure you don't mess up on the signs. And now um, you have negative 6 over 42 and 7 over 42, I think 14, and then uh, 21, negative 21. Put that all together, and you'll find out that you have uh, negative 6 over 42, which would be negative 1 over 7, conveniently. So 1 over 56 is your answer. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Thank you for watching this video. Um, please stay tuned for the next video where we look at general regions. 
Um, please comment down below, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.